just gets redundant. Don't think that I'm not aware or that I don't care. Cause I know what I'm capable of. When you're not here, I'm so much better. I promise. But I think to myself, well, at least God saw it. My God conscience is yelling and flaying, so I'd rather have it be quiet. I'm so grateful for it, I didn't used to be. Everything was difficult, quite a challenge to me. And I don't say that because I want you to think that I was ever a victim. And I don't say that because I look back on it. And of course I wish that I'd done some things different. But if I had, well, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing so beautifully, right? in constant reflection I guess maybe that's why I'm so obsessed with perfection to the point that I'll never achieve it to the point that I deceive myself in thinking that I could be Half of what I imagine myself to be. Maybe I don't give myself enough credit. And other times I think I give myself too much credit. As long as I'm giving God the credit, that's really all that matters, right? wish that things could just be the slightest bit easier for as long as I've been doing it. But then again, if it was then, I wouldn't need him so bad. If it was then, I wouldn't be this fit to be had. On my knees, begging him, please, 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 please. Take this away. I guess you're not going to take it away. Well, maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's a purpose. Maybe I'm supposed to figure it out. And stop whining. So if I sound like I'm really harsh on people that take pills for their problems, it's because I don't. And I know that I'm a prime candidate, but I won't, but I won't. I'd rather cry it out, cry it out, cry it out, yell and scream it out, yell and scream it out, yell and scream it out. Disarray. It's okay to be unraveling. It's okay to not have yourself together. It's okay to not have something clever to say as a rebuttal. So obsessed with image, but not God's image. Live in a world that's so 
obsessed with money, but eternal life is money. We live in a world that loves their social status, but I'd rather have God status, saint status, you know, that kind of shit. I think it's way better. It's preferable to all the things that they tell me are preferable. And sometimes I feel guilty because I don't want what they want. Sometimes I feel guilty because I don't want what I've been told to want. Like a baby. <laughs> I just don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I know I got the parts. The only thing that matters is your heart. Is your heart. Is your heart. Is your heart. And I think I got plenty of that. And I don't want to think that I'm in the clear, but. I know that I'm doing what he wants me to do. Because if I wasn't, I think that I would be far more comfortable. Because when I was drinking to the point of extinction, I was plenty comfortable. Waking up in urine. That was the state I loved being in. I had no shame. When I was stealing shit, oh man, I love to lift liquor bottles. Think nothing of it. Though the entire time I knew that God's eye was on my ass. That's why he saved it. Maybe that's why he rescued me from drowning and all the ways that I was drowning. I also almost drowned in the ocean. Whenever I think about that day, I know that God is real. I know that God is real. Cause it's something, you don't just know it, you feel it. And I've always been emotional. To the extent that everybody assumed that it would take its toll. They assumed that I was gonna commit suicide. Because they looked at me and they said, that won't subside, no. And she refuses to be medicated, so... I'm gonna be reading her obituary I know that's what they thought I know that's what they thought I hear every internalized thought Cause I do it so much But it's always comforted me To know that God hears all these things and God sees all these things that nobody else can see. And God understands things that I understand inside of me. And because of that, I can't get mad about this. Well, I mean, I can, but there's no point. I don't stay mad for very long. If I'm mad, it's for like five minutes. And I move on. There's just so much out there that I can think about, you know? We have latent inhibition, which means we don't have any control over the information that we process. We process all of it. So I don't really have much sympathy for people that choose to fill their heads with a bunch of garbage information and they're depressed. Yeah, you should kill yourself.
You should kill yourself because you've already chosen that. So I was thinking about this, a shout out to Lauren, because I, I thought of you immediately when I was talking to myself, doing my little seminar in the bedroom, as we do, you know? There's no better place for a seminar than your own house, okay? Um, I was thinking about all these people that are like so spiritually dead, you know, and how they just say all these things and it's like, who cares, dude? And like, I, this has been comforting me and also depressing me at the same time because it comforts me that I know this shit, but it also depresses me for them. You know, I just feel sorry for them. I wish that there was something I could do for them. I wish that there was some Bible verse that I could cite that would make them realize that God is real, but you know, they're not open to that. And because they're not open to that, they are dead. So whenever they talk shit to you, whenever they talk your religion down or they swear that God's not real or, you know, trust the science, you know, all that bullshit, whenever they do that, I mean, they're dead. They're fucking dead, dude. <laughs> Lord, I love you. <laughs> I sound like you. But yeah, um It's like there's there's no truth in their existence. And I mean, it really is sad. It's just so sad to think about that. Like that we are like just walking amongst like all these dead people, man. Like, they have no idea that God's the answer. Like, every single thing that they turn to, and it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work, because it's not God. <laughs> See, this is something worth crying about. The fact that all these people don't know God and they'll never be close to him and they'll never feel his love and they'll never have his salvation and yes I know I'm wearing a cannabis hat I know that shit that's not where my salvation comes from my salvation doesn't come from this cold brew my salvation doesn't come from all these CDs that I have, all this, all this jazz, all this Thelonious Monk, okay? And my salvation doesn't even come from my music either, you know? Like, I remember getting into an argument with this girl that I used to work with a long time ago. And this is when I was going through like a secular phase. I call it the you're not my dad phase. Um, but I, I remember talking to her about music and, and telling her that like music saved my life. And I was specifically referring to Fiona Apple um, and Elliot Smith, but uh, to uh, obviously depressed musicians. Um, but yeah, she said, Music can't save you. And I remember getting angry about that. Because I felt like it was discrediting and invalidating um, the fact that, you know, I really was comforted by th this music that they made. But, you know, she was right. I mean, who put, who put these people on earth? Who gave them this talent, you know? Who allowed them the opportunity to utilize this gift that they have? You know, they might not recognize it as such, but that's still what it is, you know? So, it's like I believe in Jesus enough to overcompensate. So, I'm hoping that. You know, if Fiona Apple is, like, burning in hell, I'm hoping that, like, I can intercede or, you know, it was just kind of pompous to say that. <laughs> it's a little arrogant, yeah. But, but seriously, though, like, a bitch, 
she helped me so much. And so, like, I think about that a lot. <laughs> Takes all kinds, right? Takes all kinds. I've been thinking about that a lot, too. You know, like, how I'm a different flavor of Christianity. I know I'm definitely, definitely, definitely a different flavor of orthodoxy to the point that I'm sure, like, I mean, people that call themselves orthodox or Christian, like, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to associate with me, you know, because of my mouth or because of the fact that I'm wearing a weed hat. Um, but... Why are you putting limits on what Jesus can do? Like, who are you to do that? Who are you to say that, oh, well, she's not a Christian because, like, she still does these things? Honey, I'm still a sinner, and so are you. Now, the problem is what we define as sin. And I'm not just going to go along with, like, what the world defines as sin. Or what some fucking layman defines as sin just let you know, I discussed cannabis with my bishop, alright? And he said, you know, if it has any benefits, it's still somewhat detrimental to you, like, in the long run. Because of, you know, your brain, brain cells. And I, you know what I said to him? I said, Look, man. It's <laughs> so, like, yeah, th this is how I, I, I talk to, you know, very high ordained clergy. Is he clergy? I feel like that's. It doesn't matter what I say. It's going to be offensive, especially to religious people. Like really, really religious people, it's going to be offensive. Um, but you know, I just got baptized like this past year. Okay. So please don't put all this expectation on me. Like, oh, I'm supposed to behave like this or I'm supposed to talk this way. I need to shut the fuck up. You don't know me. You don't know what it's like to be me. You don't know what it's like to have to deal with what I deal with. Just like, you know, I know I talk a bunch of shit, but like, I'm not gonna try to like tell people what to do though. You know, I have several friends of mine that are on psychiatric medication. I got friends that are on birth control. You know, I'm not... What am I supposed to do? Throw water on them or some shit? You know, this is what I'm talking about. It's like people don't know, like, what the right approach is to anything. So there's a lot of stuff that I want to say to people, but I can't because it's just, it's not my place. And I feel like I'm being judgmental. So I say it on here. I do jokes about it. Well, that's so frustrating to like listen to people that don't make art. They have no no idea what it's like to be a stand up comic. They have no idea what it's like to have schizophrenia. And yet, they want to like lecture you on like how you're doing it wrong. Well, are you me? Because if you were me, you could do it different. I'm kidding. That's obviously I didn't have a I didn't have a punchline for that because it doesn't even make sense, you know. <laughs> You're not me, and I'm not you. So I don't know. I I talk about a lot of stuff that's like you know there are really bad side effects with everything that you do. But they talk about the side effects of marijuana. They talk about the side effects of coffee. They talk about the side effects of drinking too much or smoking too many cigarettes. They talk about the side effects of, of popping ecstasy tablets all the time. You know, they do not talk about the side effects of like being hooked on technology. I mean, any information on this is very minimal in comparison with all the information that you receive on how dangerous all these other drugs are, you know? It's just ridiculous. But I will say that there are side effects of being a Christian, is that you're constantly attacked by the devil, all right? But just know that if the devil's attacking you, that means that you're 
worth a shit, okay? Because he wouldn't bother with you if he didn't think that, that you were going to work for God and, you know, haul ass and do something positive for this world. So, I mean, that comforts me too. Whenever I have these little emotional meltdowns or whatever the fuck. It's like, you know, this wouldn't be happening if I was worthless. Like, if, if I wasn't doing anything that was going to bring glory to God, you know, he wouldn't fool with me. So, that's something I think about a lot, though. Is this bringing glory to God? If I smoke marijuana, is that is that being is is that bringing glory to God? If if I, I mean, I know that there's that there's that passage, you know, in Corinthians, like whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Um, yes, it's very true. I mean, people drink, you know, like you're at a wedding and you get drunk at the wedding. It's like you're having a good time. Like you're part of a celebration. So like you should get drunk, you know, like, I, I don't think that's wrong. I don't think that's sinful or anything. Now, if you're getting drunk the next day, I mean, maybe, maybe if you're just like preventing a hangover, you know, hair off the dog, the bitch you, right? Well, for doing that, that's a little different, but if you're, you know, you're drinking like that all the time, you know, obviously that's gluttonous, so that's bad. But, you know, I, I just, I'm always like excessively scrutinizing like everything that I'm thinking and the stuff that I read and the stuff that I process and like the world around me. And I, it's so debilitating sometimes because I, I can never just calm down and like ease up and I mean, that's why I smoked pot because it's like, dude, like people that don't understand what it's like to have information constantly flowing inside of their brain. Like I've compared it to a TV. Okay. A TV where the, like the channels just flip, but that's the thing. Like whenever you're conscious of God, like you have the remote. So it's not like your brain's just going and going and going, you know? So I, I talk to God and he helps me to like recenter myself, but that doesn't make it go away, you know? And like, that's another thing with mental illness that people don't understand that pills don't make it go away. Just because you pray and you get down on your knees, that doesn't mean that God's going to take it from you. And if God doesn't take it from you, then that means that you're supposed to have it. There's some... There's something there that you're supposed to learn. There's something there that he wants you to teach people. I really believe that. My heart is heart, which is why when people tell me, don't talk about schizophrenia, don't, don't tell other people that you have that, you know, they're going to stigmatize you. They're going to hate you and all that. I don't care. You're wrong. You're wrong because this stigma is so intense that people are like afraid for my life. Okay. That means that there's, an additional reason right there why, why I should talk about it. And if you had any idea how many people like come up to me and they tell me, yeah, man, I appreciate you saying something about cannabis because I felt like I was the only person that was struggling with it. I talked to other Christians about it. They tell me that they feel like it's a thorn in their side too. And you know, that's really nice. It's really nice to talk to people that say, oh, yeah, I struggle with, with masturbating or I struggle. You don't have any idea how many people struggle with watching pornography, dude. Pornography needs to be banned, period. Like, it's destroying everything, man. Now, I don't really like porn. I'm not a big fan of porn. But, like, I, I will totally admit the fact that, like, it's definitely eye-catching, right? It's terrible. That's terrible that something so sick and twisted could just draw you into it and just hold you hostage. You know, but, but that's what sin is, you know? So I am I think about that in relation to cannabis too. I'm like, dude, if this wouldn't bother you so much if it was just all good, you know? But I guess it's a double-edged sword, right? I mean, it could be good and it could be bad. Nothing is all good or all bad. I mean, 
what is that other passage? Like nothing is unclean of itself. Nothing of itself is unclean. I believe that's in Romans. Is that in Romans? Whatever. Um. Yeah. So it's good that we're analyzing this. It's good that we're like making assessments and trying to figure things out, and you know, not just you know, never cross-examining ourselves. Because I feel, I feel like that's a genuine problem that most people have. They don't cross-examine themselves. They don't um, give a fuck if what they're doing is right. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about the end result. They just care about right now. Momentary impulse, instant gratification, what have you. Well, I mean, that's never been the reason why I smoke pot. Like I said, it's it's just like, it's a comfort because, I mean, I was saying this um, when I started working at Steak and Shake, I was saying this about it, that it was like <laughs> suicide prevention. I said this to my bishop too. I said, cannabis is a suicide prevention plant. <laughs> It is for a lot of people, though. I mean, talk to veterans. They'll tell you that shit straight up. Talk to people that have been, like, in serious situations, like, you know, with severe PTSD, you know, like, complex borderline personality-style PTSD. That's, that's what it is. Like, there's a direct link between borderline personality disorder and uh, PTSD. But... Yeah, man, like, I think the issue is recreational use, man, because if you use that plant recreationally, it's almost like sacrilegious or something, because if it's a plant, it grows in the ground, and it's, like, supposed to be revered in a certain way, you know, like, you don't just, like, disrespect the plant like that, you know, like, if God provides it for you, then it's, like, you need to respect it. And people aren't respecting it when they're passing around a five percolator water bong and smoking weed and watching Family Guy. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just those types of people. Like, I don't want to say it's blasphemous or anything because I feel like <laughs> it's blasphemous to misuse the word blasphemous. <laughs> mm hmm. But yeah, it's good to ask questions though, man. It's good to ask questions. But see, that's, that's why I think weed is good because it makes you ask questions, you know? I guess it just depends on the type of person you are though. So of all the people that do psychedelics, it's like a very, very small portion of them, like I'm talking maybe a handful of them, like actually get something out of it and they're able to elevate and move on to something better you know whereas most people take psychedelics and they you know they just have a really good time or they do too many of them and end up in a psych ward and why do you end up in a psych ward ask yourself this why why do you think people end up in a psych ward that take too many psychedelics why do you think people end up in a psych ward because they're smoking this weed that's like 20% THC. Like, why do you think that they're freaking out? Because it makes you more aware of certain things. And a lot of people aren't ready for that awareness. Which is why the devil will infiltrate that. And he'll start fucking with your head. So, yeah. You could do a TED talk, baby. I could, yeah, I could do a TED talk if I could just stay on topic. <laughs> if staying on topic is a virtue, like, I will never be virtuous, I'll tell you that. But I'm not taking Adderall. I'm not doing that. Because a lot of people will say that, you know, well, you, you, there, there are drugs for that, you know, you can take Vyvanse. No, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. 
me. You don't have to tell me the weed's made in a lab. I fucking know that shit. See, that's why I'm conflicted. Because if they were still just growing into the ground under direct sunlight, it wouldn't be an issue. But Bob Marley would not be touching any of this stuff. I, I guarantee. I guarantee you that. But. Anyway. It is a great hat, though. It is a great hat.